This is simply the fastest increase California has seen since the beginning of this pandemic. Case rates are skyrocketing. We are at capacity. We don't have any free beds in the hospital. The virus explosion in the U.S. showing no signs of stopping. There is great concern about the possibility of the Thanksgiving holiday becoming a nationwide super spreader event. Gather at Thanksgiving and regather for your funeral on New Year's Day. Now from ABC7, live breaking news. We are now moving backwards, not forwards. The state pulls the emergency break and sends more than two dozen counties back into the purple tier. The new measures will go into effect Sunday at midnight. Health officials announcing them with urgency, worried about their hospital capacity. They're also temporarily suspending professional collegiate and youth sports. That means that for those teams, uh, they will not be able to play games or have practices where they have direct contact. Due to the continued surge in COVID-19 infections, the California Department of Public Health has postponed postponed the issuance of its updated youth sports guidance. The California Interscholastic Federation does not expect the CDPH will issue any guidance allowing for schools to return to full practice and competition until after January 1st, 2021. January 1st, 2021. At the earliest. Yeah, that like really that really hits my heart and like everything, like my whole team, because that's like, we really know, like, we really don't know if we're really gonna have a season or not. Yeah, I'm really worried about if, if we get a good season or not, honestly. I don't wanna say I'm not confident, but, and I don't wanna say that, I'm not gonna assume that our season's gonna be canceled either, but I'm just hoping that everything isn't just absolutely taken away. For my club team, I don't have like my own like age group team because all the girls that I, I was training with graduated or left. So I was having to find teams to guest play for, for so like MVLA and they invited me to go to Phoenix for a showcase. And by the time like they were getting ready to go, Phoenix had told them that California teams like aren't allowed to come. So like we weren't really left with any showcases to perform at which was definitely a letdown. Today's gonna be technical day and fitness with the ball, nothing without the ball. Okay, so it's, uh, it's you're no, you guys are not brand new to this one, you've done it before, but we're just gonna add a little bit of more intensity in terms of your endurance. Super important, right? Game, game realistic, so let's get it, make it happen. Since there are no games and no showcases, we have been able to get footage of their training here, replicating that game intensity and showing those videos to colleges. You know, college coaches um, understand the, the the situation, the COVID situation, so they're kind of like meeting us at a certain point, knowing that we cannot show them footage on game situations, but um, the training situations do, do help. If you thought this was your cardio, not really. The cardio part is gonna start right now. So now, we're gonna pass the ball back and I had a conversation initially with her about, you know, who do you wanna be? Do you wanna be that player that is prepared or unprepared? What do you wanna be? There are only two choices, right? And she goes, Coach, well, I want to be prepared. Well, let's get into it. Last month, the most I received was from two, two college coaches. And I mean, that's not, it's better than nothing, but it's definitely, the process is still going like really a lot slower than I would like it to be. I'm definitely frustrated with this process. Well done, super. There you go. The girls game tends to be a little different than the boys game in that I find that most girls that play soccer are um, academically very, very strong. So junior college is not really a, a strong option for them because they want to go to the four year school. For some of them, that junior college now might be their option, which I think is, is difficult for them because they, they, they want that four year experience right off the bat. I think I just need to keep telling myself that it's gonna be worth it and to enjoy the struggle. I know this is, it's been a long journey for me and I, I know that I'm gonna make it 
worth the time that I've been putting in for soccer, so. One touch. Well done. Well done. Over the fall, I recorded pretty much every high school game that was on television and watched it and just got angrier and angrier that our guys weren't able to play. I understand all the reasons, but it's still, you know, we're all human beings and we're like, well, why can't we do it, right? Why can't we get out there and play? Just to see like other states having seasons just makes me kind of feel jealous in some type of way. I know Utah, they finished their season like two weeks ago and like they had every single game, but California and like some other states in the West Coast hasn't even like started full practice with pads. You know, before I never had time, but since the pandemic happened, I had plenty of time. So I was just bored and so I just hit her up and then that's how it really happened. We met on Snapchat, but uh, I guess he just slid up on my story and <laughs> I didn't even know him. My name is Hibakini Kenny, and yeah, I'm Joe's girlfriend. <laughs> he was a rookie. He he came up with like the most cringiest pick of wise, like, you're a 9 out of 10 and I'd be the one for you. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I just thought he was a, a cool guy. I thought he was like too cool for me or whatever. We're usually on the phone, like FaceTiming, whenever like we're finished like practice, working out, or after school, you know, whenever we have time, we just like FaceTime. It was weird, like dating someone during it, like through a screen, uh, it wasn't for me, but Joe, shows a lot of love so and I felt it. She's really um outgoing and that she she really cares about others. He has his priorities straight. Like he knows what he wants his life in life. You know, it was just something special. To my mind I was like, dang, I think this is a sign or something. But I think it's just a miracle to be honest. If this COVID thing never happened, how would it probably have been just training and not even caring about a girl or anything. I'm feeling mad, you know, it's nothing to do. I'm just going on a Zoom every morning, really not doing nothing, no. It's not the gyms, everything is closed. It's really boring, really boring. I talked to a couple of Division One coaches. They didn't really come out and say that they're not looking for 2021 players, but for guys that are not high on the radar and that didn't play AAU, um, over the spring summer season. It's definitely as plain as day because, um, you know, if schools are not really reaching out and calling, that really just means that you're not on their radar. So we've more so taken the approach of reaching out to Division II schools and even NAIA schools and of course, junior colleges in the area. Right now he has some interest with a couple of Division II schools, which he will fit and he's definitely willing to go Division II. Trying to help him understand like, you know, everybody can't go Division I right out of high school. A lot of kids go junior college and go Division I or Division II and, and play really well. Coach of Holy Names had called me, just giving me background information about the school and how he was going to keep up with me throughout this process of COVID and the whole, you know, senior year. I had got a phone call from Hawaii Hilo, a D2 in Hawaii. Coach Hart had seen him film and he really liked my game. He really wanted me to go out there and, and really show my show what I could do. We were recommending that he starts with the state schools first. The, the deadline's on Monday. He actually has been working with SPAT. They've been working with him on his state school applications. Let's click off this uh, this checkbox of, of applying. It's important for him to get his financial aid, pack it in. Well, what SPAT does, we want to prepare students for life after sports. And so 
what we're preaching to students is if sports is not here, we need to develop ourselves to have other skills, other activities, other interests outside of only sports. This is our 14th year of providing service here for students in Oakland. Not having this sports season has really been tough on our kids. A lot of them feel like they don't have an opportunity to go to college. They may think that since sports is not there, that that was their only outlet um, to actually going to college. It's bad. I, I like that program. I'm glad my coach had introduced me to that because they got some people that's willing to work with you, want you to, you know, get to the next level as as bad as you want to get there. In his mind, he's like, I want to play D1 on that top level, but getting a free education, that's what it's always been about. I've been working my whole life just to get to this point, to get that scholarship, to get that free ride to a college I want to go to, just to get that free education. Right now I'm thinking of playing to see if I can get even more offers. I still got those three offers, but I know at the same time if I try to get more, those offers could probably go away. If I lost those offers, um, it would really hit, like hit me and my family because my, their whole lives and my whole life, they've been taking care of me and my sisters. And I just want to give back to them. Joe Tungamahoa will be attending the University of Southern Utah to pursue his career in football. I finally committed after four long years of high school football. And to be honest, it feels great to like have all my family around. And I just want to thank the man above, my family, friends, coaches, for pushing me to the max and believing in me. We, we actually were on a Zoom call with the um, with my Southern Utah coaches. So we were really excited about Joe. Um, I thought he was he was our number one guy on the board uh, at all positions. So when I saw him, I said, look, we got to get this guy. I, I don't know if we'll get a chance to get him, uh, but but if we get an opportunity to, to sign Joe, let's, let's try to do it. I never um, visited Southern Utah and um, just to commit there for four years. I'm not too sure like how the campus looks or like how it's gonna be or like I'm not too sure how if it's gonna be cold, hot or anything like that. But just seeing many videos and many uh, players Instagrams, it looks it looks like a nice campus. The city really looks um really fan based and uh, everybody looks caring. A lot of the things that we do here at Southern Utah is, is look for character uh, characteristics that are gonna help you become a better player than you are in high school. And so Joe was continuing to work out throughout the pandemic. His GPA uh, was good. He had a great home life where they taught him the right type of values and hard work ethic and discipline and those type of things. And they were explaining to us how they were giving us a full ride. And my mom and my dad, they really liked that. And just to see their smiles on their faces, you know, just made me, just made me like, I don't know, just, this was just a good feeling. We're very happy and blessed to have him get a full scholarship. And uh, yeah, we're very happy and excited for his next journey. Very proud of you, Joe. You know, we'll be there to support you 100%. Whatever you do, we love you. Super happy for Joe, you know, I mean, we're still hoping we got that season, obviously, but very, very happy for him. Very much of a relief, I'm sure, for him and for his family that, you know, he's got that opportunity and we still want a senior season for him, but, but you know, we know, we know that he's going to continue to play and we're excited about that for him. And welcome back as the stay-at-home order gets triggered in the Bay Area region. You have to stay at home unless you're doing something essential like shopping or going to work. We are in a dire situation, the worst that we've seen since the beginning of this pandemic. 
The start to this holiday season so different for so many. The continual decline of ICU availability across California. Southern California down to 0%. Bay Area now down to 13.1%. It was around Christmas. She works at SFO, right? There's a lot of incoming people from all over the state. I think she probably caught it from one of them. When we found out, she felt really sick. And like, she was saying she couldn't really breathe. He took her in. That's when we found out she was positive. She had to stay quarantined in her room. Our whole family stayed quarantined too. So walking around the house, you all have to wear masks. Even when my mom went out to go buy food, we had to like scrub like the packages just in case anybody like touched it. The week after, we found out my little sister had it. My older sister and my younger sister, they shared a room together. She said she was fine and everything, but when we tested her, they said she was positive. For my older sister, her hardest part was breathing. She wasn't breathing like really well and she couldn't eat. And then my little sister was just tasting. She felt normal. Well, the worst scenario was everybody getting positive because my little sister, she was mostly hanging out with everybody. We didn't even know she had it at the time. Just to find out she had it was scary because I didn't know if I had it. I didn't know if my mom had it or my sisters had it. So my great uncle passed away from COVID. This was like all at the same time. My mom was really worried. She even stopped going to work too. I didn't even know how the money was coming in to be honest. I really thank my mom because she was really one like keeping the family really quarantined. Everybody out there, like my friends, they said the virus is nothing. It's just, I think the government is just trying to scare it. But just to see my two sisters having it, it really caught my eye and I was like, dang, this is actually real. Both my sisters, they were both getting out and I'm grateful for that too. I've just been in the house lately. I've been trying to get over this sickness. Like my nose has been stuffed. I can't, sometimes like the first beginning, I couldn't taste and you know, that was kind of the, some of the symptoms of COVID. I couldn't eat and I was like feeling like maybe just getting over stomach virus or anything like that. But then when I woke up the next morning, I couldn't taste, smell, just, I was out of it, sweating like crazy. Now I went to my mom first, I'm like, Mom, I, I don't know, I think I got corona. I got tested yesterday, so I'm just waiting on the results now. Hopefully I'm not at the COVID, because that's definitely, then I got a quarantine, you know, through 10 days, 14 days actually. So that's definitely, that's a restart. And we start, you feel me, really practicing in January for our school team. The last time I practiced was about probably a week ago. It's been cold lately, and plus I've been sick, so that's even worse. I had a workout with the Holy Name coach. He said, come down to the practice. And I'm thinking like, I can't even go to the practice. I couldn't even talk to the coach or the people who run it. I couldn't even tell them that I'm coming because I was really sick. So it just messed up a lot of things for me. It was like kind of weird because I don't get sick at all. I was anxious. I had to get tested and glad it came back negative. When I heard the news, I was I was <laughs> jumping up and down right away because it's like COVID is it's close. It's spreading quickly around here. I'm feeling relieved because it's not what I thought it was and I can actually go back to playing and doing what I wanted to do and get back better. The right feels in my body. My mom, she was sick actually, and she was having the COVID symptoms too. You know, she overcame that. And she ain't even, you know, she's not sick no more. She is feeling definitely relieved too because I have a little sister, so I don't want to give that to them. So she's definitely feeling good. Certainly there's a spike right now in California and it's youth sports is not to blame <laughs> because it's never happened. I've you know, been talking to my friends throughout the country in Tennessee, Georgia, 
there's a roadmap for us. That's the, the positive thing that we have is that people have gotten it, gotten it done and gotten it done relatively safely. The science dictates that schools and athletics that are done following proper guidelines are not super spreader events. Just give us the opportunity to actually try this out. The misnomer that we're just like, oh, we want to get out, we want to win games, that is that is idiotic and it's asinine. What we want to do is we want to, we want to provide our kids with some smiles. What I am spending most of my day dealing with right now is mental health. Depression is through the roof. There's suicide. We're hearing about suicide attempts all the time. I know there's definitely been a lot of mental health struggles. Indoors, locked up, you don't feel connected. We're seeing this not only from children being kept home from schools, but also from a lack of interaction and going out and being with their friends and living these normal athletic lives. And I think this should be prioritized. It is not cool when I see a packed bar or restaurant next to a shut down gymnasium for school. That makes zero sense to me. I know nothing's perfect, but I can tell you there's a 0% chance of this being perfect if the kids don't get to play. Coming up on The Lost Season. Let them play! Let them play! Let them play! High school sports have kind of just been like pushed to the side. This is not a political issue. We are not going to stop until you guys are wearing your pads or you guys are playing. Coaches are like finally starting to email back. You're on an accelerated timeline. You know, this year's kind of your last go round. After a, a year of no school. I've been needing this. I told them some really good news. It was right before the game. Someone on our team had it. We've worked so hard. We've stayed so focused. After all of this, is this the beginning of the end? 